Hey, everybody. Uh, we're back with another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. And this week is a community-inspired post here. And uh, you've probably heard us talk about the uh, Facebook community that we have online. And uh, Anna actually asked a really good question. And I'm going to read you the question right after. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your hosts, Stephen White and Eric Worrell. Oh, I love that music. It's great. <laughs> So here's what Anna asked. She said, has anyone ever tried to recover rent from an evicted tenant through a collection agency? I went through an eviction and was awarded the judgment. There's nothing to hold the tenant responsible to actually pay it except a court record and maybe something on their credit report. For some, this doesn't mean anything. So true. Yeah, there's there's so many different places to dissect this comment and comment on it and and sort of give our our viewpoint on it or maybe our own experience on it. And I'm sure a lot of landlords have been in this situation where somebody's owed them money and landlords uh, who have been through this know that having a judgment at the end of the day does not mean a whole lot. A money judgment awarded by the court saying, yes, this person owes you money. Collecting on that judgment is a whole different story and the courts do not do a whole lot to help you with that. So definitely a huge problem. It's something that landlords need to be aware of. And, um, and at the end of the day, I, I'm the bearer of bad news. It's not, it doesn't look good for landlords. Let's put it that way. Mm. So just to sort of explain where I'm coming from and give you my experience in this before we, uh, before I started a, a background check company in an agency, I actually owned a collection agency and I have plenty of experience with, uh, different types of debt, different types, different industries of debt. So in the agency that I had owned, we were not the traditional agency that most people have in their minds of these monsters making phone calls and harassing people and trying to collect, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to collect on uh, what they call zombie debt, right? Zombie okay. debt is old, very old stuff, usually sold off in portfolios of like credit card debts and things like that. We were a collection agency that worked directly with the creditors. So we had dentists, colleges, we've had obviously property management companies. So all different industries that we were working directly with their, uh, our clients billing department and their own internal process to help try to recover money that was lost. So in every industry, everything is, you know, rated or, or measured by what's called a recovery rate. And Traditionally, medical is pretty low in terms of a recovery rate. You're looking at about 19, 20% of money that's owed is actually going to be recovered. So for every $100 that somebody owes uh, the dentist, 20 of that will likely get paid by, by average. And is that after going through an agency? Yes. Okay. That's so that's not agency. even the recovery rate for the dentist. That's when you put the professionals on it. Yes. And their recovery rates are out 20%. Yes. That is debt identified as uncollectible by the dentist. So typically what happens, we'll use the dentist just because we're talking about that as a good example. Eric, you go into the dentist for easy numbers. You owe $1,000 for a handful of root canals that you had done, Mm -hmm. right? You don't pay. The the dentist lets you leave and says, we're going to put you on a payment structure and you're going to pay us $100 a month. One month goes by, Eric doesn't pay. Two months, Eric's still not paying. Three months is the key number. That's the 90-day mark. And that's usually when most places say, we've got a problem. Mm -hmm. This is not working. Eric's not fulfilling his part of the bargain here. Uh, We were nice enough to give him a payment plan or a structure, and he's he's dodging us. So at that point, they're going to start really putting the pressure on. They're going to start saying, hey, we're going to use a third-party agency. This could have a negative impact on your credit. Who knows? Maybe they're super aggressive and they're saying, we might sue you for this money. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that they're trying to do to get you to pay, if at day 120, you still have not paid, there's a good chance they're wiping it off their books. They're charging it off. They're they're writing that off as a bad debt and it's gone. And that is typically the point when it goes to a collection agency. What the collection agency recovers is what's considered that recovery rate. So if a collection agency out of 10 people collect money from two of them, that's pretty typical. It's pretty average. Dentists, I'm giving you that example because dentists and sort of medical in general are on the lower end of the spectrum. Believe it or not, property management and landlords are even lower. 9% was the highest that I've ever seen 
for a property management company on their debt recovery. So 9% of what they turned over why, would end up being collected. Why do you think that is? I mean, my first thought goes to the fact that maybe you look at your dentist as somebody who runs a business, but you don't look at your landlord like somebody who runs a business, and you're like, ah, they're not going to do anything about it. I'm, I'm out of here. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you as a somebody who needed dental work, you needed that regardless of your financial situation. They may have caught you at a terrible time in your life and you just couldn't pay it, right? For property management, you're almost guaranteeing you're catching them at the wrong time, especially like in Anna's uh, note here, that person had just been evicted. There's a good chance they're couch surfing now or still trying to find another. There's a good chance they don't like you. (laughs) There's a very good chance they don't like you, right? (laughs) Oh, thank you for the eviction. Here's my money. Right. So you're catching these people at the worst time of their financial life likely, right? Or maybe maybe this time is very stretched out. Maybe they're the type of people that constantly get evicted or go through this and, and are, you know, that that's just how they operate. You know, they one eviction after the other. But either way, they couldn't pay the rent. You had to remove them. There's a very low chance that they're going to come up with an extra thousand dollars, two thousand, whatever they owe you on top of their current rent and what they're currently paying. Because they're already behind. They're already behind. And it's so hard to catch back up after that. So you're dealing with people at their lowest point when Mm -hmm. you're dealing with collecting on eviction money. And they don't like you. And they don't like you. It doesn't help. (laughs) Right. And depending on what type of landlord you are, to make no mistake, a lot of them are calling landlords out passively saying, I don't think you can collect this. I don't think you're going to do this or... Big deal, you got a judgment. I have five other judgments. Good luck. Get in line. I've heard people say that. Get in line. Yeah. You know? I, I think this uh, begs a question that you need to ask here. And uh, we, previously on an episode, I can't recall which one it was, but it was probably about like five, six episodes ago, we were talking about changes that are coming down the pipe here uh, starting in July 2017 that is going to affect uh, uh, credit scores for people. Can you elaborate on how you think that that might kind of affect this conversation of recovering uh, money that is owed from a tenant? Yeah, certainly. So the new regulations that came out, basically the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, have decided that it's not fair that some court jurisdictions report judgments to the credit bureaus. And that judgment will eventually end up on a person's credit report and do damage to their credit. So in this case where Anna mentions that, you know, she was awarded the eviction and the judgment and she's hoping that it affects their credit. Come July 1st, it guaranteed will not affect their credit if they're counting on just that judgment alone to create an entry on that person's credit report. It will no longer create an entry. So as of July 1st, judgments will no longer have any impact on a person's credit report if it's being reported by the courts. And the troubling thing about this isn't that news itself. I think it's when the tenant, say Anna's tenant, were to figure that out before they got evicted. And they know. So then when if you're the landlord and uh, you're going after a, a, a tenant, uh, who owes you money and they're well educated about the topic, they know that, you know what, I'm not going to pay you. It's not even going to affect my credit. Good luck. Yeah. Now, the only thing that that Anna does mention here that could be the saving grace is that the collection agency has different avenues than just that judgment alone. The collection agency can create an entry on a credit report. So if she obtained that judgment Place the judgment with a collection agency. That collection agency has, now you want to make sure if you're searching for the right collection agency and which one to use, I'll give you a couple pieces of advice. Number one, I would recommend go local. Find a place that's local to you. Um, Attorneys typically are, uh, there's some attorneys that do collection work. They would be acceptable in a lot of cases. But one of the first questions you want to ask is, do you report to the credit bureaus? Not every agency does. And it costs them money, actually, to report to credit bureaus. It's worth it for them, the ones that do, because they know that that's leverage to be able to eventually get that person to pay. But she also brings it back and mentions on here something that's pretty important. To some people, it doesn't mean anything. So to some people, their credit's already gone. Their credit's already shot. They've already got five judgments. They've got that stand-in-line mentality of, I don't care. I'm bulletproof at this point because I have so many other bad things. Your one 
additional judgment or your one additional collection agency account on my credit report is not going to do any worse damage that's already done. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, worth highlighting uh, a different thread in the uh, Facebook group we have around Prep for Landlords. Uh, we're just talking about like who actually makes verification calls uh, to previous landlords. Because uh, a landlord spoke up and they said something like, I own 20 properties. I've had one landlord ever call me and ask me about a former tenant. And I was pretty surprised by that because here at the office, we're doing verification calls every day, you know, six days a week, or I should say five days. We don't do them on the weekends. But the, uh, I was really surprised by that. And, you know, when you read different comments like this of somebody trying to collect eviction uh, data or trying to collect uh, money that's owed uh, from an eviction, uh, you think, you know what, if somebody were to call Anna about that tenant, what's Anna going to tell them? Probably a, a lot more than even a credit report could do. Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. That's in a perfect world, all the landlords are on the same page. All the landlords communicate with each other. There's a network. There's a, you know, there's a, a balance to it to be able to say, hey, Anna, I'm about to rent to this person that you used to rent to. What problems did you have? And Anna's going to say, avoid them like the plague. They're terrible. I had to get an eviction. Now I have a judgment. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to collect on this judgment. Um, but unfortunately, like you said, that doesn't happen. It's something that we hear constantly that they just don't, those calls aren't being made. Landlords aren't doing that. And taking the extra step to find these things out or talk to a, another landlord or, or maybe they're not even running a background check, which is crazy to me, but definitely happens. You know, people tend to trust their gut and are proven wrong in, in a lot of cases where their their instinct was off. Well, it, it tends to be the people who are really good liars are people who lie a lot because they've had a lot of experience. I tell that to landlords all the time. Don't listen, it's nothing against you. There are really savvy liars out there. There are really savvy people who have done this and do it well and are so convincing and you almost feel like a bad person questioning them. And that's their intention. That is how they're able to survive. And that is a survival trait, whether it be good or bad. But in their, from the perspective of a bad tenant, that's a survival trait that they've adapted. And they become very, very good at it, you know, and they're good at doing that. And I think that's why we see so many um, reports that we run where we see multiple evictions. And you start to think, how did this happen? How did this person have three evictions in, in a span of two years? How did that next place that rented Just becomes them? a way of life in yeah, a way. Absolutely. So, you know, for Anna, the best advice that uh, that I was able to give was, number one, it's not a bad idea to use a collection agency. And I don't say that just from a biased perspective that I have seen the inner workings and know how they work. I was up front and told her, even if you use a collection agency, don't count on that money. It's likely gone. You know, I'm going to be the bearer of bad news here. Don't have your hopes up too high because the, statistically, your chances of getting that money are so low, you probably have a better chance going to the casino and winning your money back, really. <laughs> but if you want, if you're the type of landlord, and this is a dangerous statement to make, because I've said multiple times on this podcast that principal can become very, very expensive. But in this case, if you're the type of landlord who's a principal type of person and says, I want to make sure that this person pays for this in one way or another, whether it means they're paying Anna or it means they're paying it in the sense that their credit's going to be affected and they're not going to be able to get that new credit card or they're not going to be able to get that new car. There's nothing more frustrating for a landlord than knowing you evicted somebody and running into them at the supermarket and they're driving a new BMW. I've had that conversation with landlords before too. Yeah. So there's a certain party that wants to, I hate to say you want to do damage to them, but you want to at least ensure that they didn't just get away with this scot-free and, mm -hmm. and they're out there doing it to every other landlord. So a collection agency, as of July 1st, 2017, a collection agency is the only way that you're going to be able to affect that person's credit negatively because you can't count on the courts to do that anymore. And the courts are not going to help you collect on that judgment. So in this case for Anna, a collection agency may be the only way, but save yourself some sanity. Don't go into it with super high expectations. Don't pay anything. That's my second piece of advice for a collection agency. Make sure they report to credit and make sure they work on contingency 
meaning they're going to take their fee out of anything they collect. For every $100 they collect, maybe they take 50 or 40 or whatever their percentage fee is. But it means that no more money comes out of your pocket. You're stopping the bleeding. You're not paying to collect on bad money. You're not using good money to chase bad money, which a lot of landlords will describe it as accurately. So the collection agency in this case, I think would be the appropriate step to take if you want to recover this money and remove yourself from thinking about it any longer, which I would recommend Anna do. Don't think about this anymore. It's gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Chalk it up as a loss. If you get paid on it, awesome. Great. If not, you didn't expect it anyway. Whether or not Anna could have done anything on the front end, I don't know. I didn't ask her, did you screen? Did this person have previous evictions? Did this person have other judgments? Was there any writing on the wall to say that this might be an issue? Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah. You, you can also be the landlord that just happens to be the unlucky first. Yeah, yeah it's true. I mean, it might be somebody who's been a great tenant for six, seven years, and then just something happened in their life, and Lost they snapped, yep. and they're like, I'm not paying this, I'm out, you know, I'm, I'm a new person. So even if you do everything right, sometimes it still doesn't matter. <laughs> but, you know, most of the time you can catch and you can see traits of uh, tenants that are going to not be a good fit. And if you are the unlucky first landlord, that's a little bit easier pill to swallow than knowing you took somebody with a long history of this and you're just another unfortunate victim in the long line of other victims who have, who have been affected by this person not paying down the road. So, yeah, it's a tough thing for landlords. Um, again, I don't want to say do nothing. Don't necessarily do nothing, although there are a lot of landlords that would argue that's the best thing to do because – you're not well, you say it a lot. Sometimes the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Right. It's just not worth the squeeze. It's not worth the extra amount of effort that you're going to put in trying to collect this money when realistically, statistically, your chances are, are very, very, very low of ever collecting it. Well, I think that's a, a pretty thorough answer for that question from the uh, Facebook group. So Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a real bummer. I want to be positive, but in this case... There's not a lot of positive that come out of it. There's well, maybe, not. you know, maybe we can have some of that fun theme music we have. It's actually called Happy Blues, which is kind of, you know, ironic. But that's how this music <laughs> is going to fade in. And this episode's going to end. Oh.